Hi, I'm Mark Gaylor, Sony Global Imaging Ambassador. I'm not normally so excited about an announcement of a mid-level APS-C camera, but the A6400 is certainly different. Um, a lot of the news is not to do with the body itself, although some people will perhaps be uh, quite impressed with the little flippy screen um, that hasn't come at the expense of the EVF or Finder. Um, but I'm more interested in what is lurking behind or below the surface of this body. So I would like to take the opportunity just to review some of those uh, items now. First off is very, very fast AF. They've announced it as the world's fastest AF, but Sony have a habit of doing this regularly because their AF does indeed keep on getting faster. This is more than twice as quick as the A6500 camera. And they've done this um, by just using the standard Exmor sensor. It's not the Exmor R, the backlit illuminated sensor, or the Exmor RS sensor, which is the stack sensor that we find in uh, cameras like the RX100 and the A9. What uh, they've able to do though is put in a, a very good Beyonds chip um, which can process data really quickly off uh, the sensor and this has given rise to something called real-time tracking also referred to as object tracking by Sony. Uh, this has also given rise to a very popular request um, basically, it was on my um, 2019 wish list, and I've only had to wait two weeks for this feature to appear. And that is IAF that happens automatically in continuous autofocus, i.e. we don't have to hold down a custom button uh, to activate this. And Sony have put out a little uh, movies or several movies showing this in operation and it seamlessly switches between face detect and IAF as soon as it can pick it up. It also, um, we have options to uh, assign it uh, to a custom key and we can switch between left eye and right eye or have the camera do that automatically. Now that's very exciting for people who are potentially going to buy this camera but it's also exciting that Sony are going to roll this out over other cameras namely the a7 III, the a7 R3, the a9. Hopefully it will also be rolled out over cameras like the, um, the a6500 as well but um, it may be chip dependent. Uh, it may be dependent on the processing power of these cameras to basically engage in what is AI, artificial intelligence, that these cameras using. Now, another movie that um, I can highlight here is, um, uh, it's again a pull, pulled off uh, Sony's YouTube channel, and it's basically object tracking, okay? And it shows you, um, we've got a new icon now that follows the object. And we can also initiate this by simply touching the screen and then have the camera track that. This seems to be a death knell for the uh, the aging center lock on AF feature that we've typically used and is a little bit slow to implement and so this is definitely a step forward uh, and I also believe that we can also initiate shutter release by pressing um, the touch screen now so uh, we're probably not up to the stage where we can select menu items yet but we are certainly increasing the functionality of that touch screen. Now they've also announced um, that um, uh, with future firmware upgrades, they've announced this is happening in the summer of 2019. That's a Northern Hemisphere summer. I'm already enjoying summer here in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, so we're looking at uh, a future firmware upgrade for this camera. And uh, I also believe the A9, possibly the A7 III and A7R III as well, that will give uh, IAF tracking for animals as well as humans. This is going to be a real hit for wildlife photographers. If you've ever tried to put uh, the focus point on the eye of a bird in flight, you'll know how valuable this feature will be. They've also um, enabled um, something called My Dial. Now it's on the control wheel, which has always been on the back of these cameras, but we are going getting a feature rich access by using My Dial to pick up three separate uh, menu functions there to quickly change settings. This is especially important on a camera such as the, um, the A6300, 6400, 6500, because we only have a single dial, that's our rear dial, we don't have a front dial and uh, we have fewer custom buttons. So um, basically hot wiring the control wheel to um, prevent us having to go into the function menu so often to pick up something that we want to change is certainly going to be a workflow improvement for these smaller bodied cameras. 
I've talked about the extra touch panel functionality, basically not only uh, moving the focus point around the screen, but also touching to um, do bursts of shooting uh, without having to touch the shutter release button as well. Uh, we also have, and this is another very popular request, and this was again on my 2019 wish list, and this is an intervalometer uh, that will enable us to do time lapse. Now, um, I already know that uh, we can possibly make movies, but I'm more interested as a, a raw shooter to shoot um, uh, single um, shots of raw uh, files and then uh, put them together in a desktop app. And uh, basically, um, Sony's going to enable their desktop application to create these time-lapse movies. So it's just another reason not to go and have to buy an intervalometer uh, if that feature is already in the camera. And that's been a feature that's a little bit overdue but I'm really glad and pleased to see it on the 6400 and again hopefully it'll be rolled out over other models in the range and finally apparently the EU removed this uh, very stupid uh, decision to uh, say that cameras are either stills cameras or movie cameras and to penalize stills cameras that can shoot movies by putting in an artificial uh, 29 minute limit on how much video they can shoot uh, because that has been removed Sony's actually removed the time limit uh, for shooting movies off this camera so we also have um, the 4K uh, when shooting in 4K, the 6300, the 6500, the screen gets very dim. That makes it very difficult to use in bright ambient light. But now that dimming doesn't ha happen. Okay, that will need possibly uh, short bursts of 4K because that will chew through your batteries. Um, or you're going to have to look at maybe a battery grip. Uh, so they've got two batteries on board uh, when um, using a very bright uh, monitor to shoot 4K footage. There's been a lot of host of another announcements around this camera as well, which makes this such a uh, an exciting day for a mid-level announcement. And that is uh, Imaging Edge will, uh, will also be available as a mobile app. And this is possibly going to re replace the Sony Play Memories app. And hopefully that's going to be much uh, more feature rich uh, when that gets on board. I also uh, know that it's going to be very feature rich for A9 users uh, where they're going to be able to uh, background load those files, uh, tag them and basically uh, crop and distribute those files um, to their media organizations as they're shooting. Now we have uh, many of the features that are in the 6400 straight out of the box are going to be rolled out over the um, the other full frame cameras over the, their forthcoming months. We've been given uh, March, April and summer upgrades. That last summer update is for the Animal IF, which presumably they're perfecting now, but pretty confident that they're going to get this right. So very exciting to see. If you're looking at uh, more information, because I've literally just scratched the surface here, is head over to my website, look for my blog on the 6400. I will list in greater detail the new features. Uh, and also, if you're interested in the software updates uh, for what's coming out to new cameras or existing cameras, then I've also done a blog post for this as well. Okay, I'm Mark Gaylor, Sony Global Imaging Ambassador. Hopefully catch you online.